Hi guys, welcome to this brief video uh, I'm doing in terms of how to start the DCS A10C. Before I go any further I'm going to close the canopy so that we don't get disturbed by the noise from outside. In real life I probably wouldn't close it as early because I still want to get out without having to use an ejector seat, but fortunately being a simulation we can get away with that. Now, it's not going to be procedurally 100% uh, accurate because I'm not a, uh, an A10 pilot, but this is how I get off the ground um, or well, certainly taxiing in uh, six or seven minutes at most. So first thing I've got to do is turn on some power. So switches down here, which can be the battery and the AC generators and inverters. Quick test of all the lamps by uh, the lamp test buttons and the warning buttons for fire. Happy with that. So the next thing to do is to start the APU. And there it is. As it comes up, I'm expecting an EGT rise, which I get, and an RPM rise. The EGT is reducing again, just keep an eye on that and the RPM. Whilst I'm over this side, I might as well just check the fuel. Looking for £5,100, which I get. Once this is at 100%, I can turn on my generator. Uh, the main reason I wait for that is so that I've got a nice stable electrical supply and there's no surges to damage, damage any sensitive electronics that I turn on. Secondary rise in the APU temperature, and now we're up to 100%, so APU generator goes on. At this point, I need to work my way down from the uh, back to the front, so let's turn the radios on in case I wish to call for taxi, which I'm not going to do in this particular instance. Uh, there's two switches behind here. It's useful to work around in a flow, uh, so the EAC and the RADALT come on at this point. Uh, I'm now going to put my fuel pumps on. And then working all the way around, very briefly around to here, these are the navigation system switches. Need to put those on nice and early because this has got an inertial navigation system in it. And that needs to be sat steady in a certain place for a period of time so that it knows where it is. It can work it all out and then it uh, takes a few minutes to align. So that's started off. So now we're ready to go. The fuel switches are on, so starting engine 1, just bring it forwards over the detent and it should start the automatic procedure. The automatic procedure should see the RPM rise, followed by the EGT surging up a bit. There we go, up to 650 and then starting to reduce and the oil pressure coming up as well. If the oil pressure doesn't come up then we've got to look at shutting down the engine. <coughs> Excuse me, I've got a bit of a frog in my throat. so. Uh, I might, uh, I might cough or, or uh, have to clear my throat a couple of times during this, but hopefully it won't be too uh, distracting. So waiting for the uh, waiting for the RPM to get to 62% shows a stable start. That's just to indicate uh, we're passing the threshold for the APU, uh, sorry, for the AC generator warning. 62% good start, so now we're going to start engine 2, same thing, rocket over the detent into idle, again looking for an RPM rise, then the EGT surge, oil pressure's coming up. And then finally we're looking for a stable 60% on the RPM. I've just got to keep watching this, make sure we don't get any untoward problems with a hot start on the engine. All looks good at the moment, so needle's just creeping up a little bit. But as the RPM rises, it will start to cool the engine with a greater throughput of uh, air going through the engine. So we're up to 675, and I'd anticipate it dropping down again. There we go don't need the uh, APU generator now so I can turn that off and the APU itself off. Got good engine starts however so we can start putting the hydraulics on at which point I can then start to test my controls. So move my control column around, spoilers going out, flaps going down, spoilers are staying both sides, so I can put those away. Flaps are away. Spoilers going away. Now I can concentrate a bit more on what's inside. So continuing around, these three switches link the fire control systems, the various computers, the HUD, the navigation system. 
turn the display on we want day anti-skid can go on that's next to it turn this display on just zoom us out a little bit there we go and continuing down here we can turn the uh, the countermeasures on to standby should we wish so next thing to test is the oxygen system it's a little button down here press and hold that the needle sweeps round audible and visual warning comes on and when you release the button it should reset and be fine and the oxygen is now on DTS upload screen is now on you can see these little asterisks on the left hand side telling us we need to load the various packages for these uh, these electronic systems within the uh, within the simulation after about 10-15 seconds they all come back on to tell you that they have loaded successfully at which point they have done so we can turn the right hand screen to CDU and the left hand screen to our top down map now the key with the CDU is that we need this figure down here, the T figure, to get to 4008, at which point the INS nav ready lights start to flash. That tells us we've uh, managed to initialise and align all our, all our INS systems. So just whilst we're waiting for that, let's have a quick down, look down here, make sure there's nothing been missed, all the electronics are good, all the engine gauges are good. Continuing around here, fuel's good, APU's off and all the switches are set. INS is flashing so click nav you see the needle swing round there on the uh, horizontal situation indicator I can now press EGI which tells me that uh, the navigation systems are using this as their primary navigation source. The only things left to do now are anything that's on here which is the seat not armed which is there those wheel steering and we're ready to go that's it guys um, that's a nice quick easy start as I do it for the DCS A10 and I hope the video has been beneficial for you if you like the video please tick like or subscribe um, because it gives me an indication if you wish me to do more videos uh, otherwise it's a very lonely world out there as you produce videos and don't know whether you're doing the right thing or not so I'll hopefully speak to you guys soon and uh, I hope you enjoy flying DCS's uh, A10 in DCS world and uh, thank you very much, take care.